Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment, entertainment, and sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. Okay, so we're witnessing something very, very unusual in this plot of land, abandoned plot of land right next to our hotel. A blue tent has come up. It wasn't there last night. It came up just this morning, and there have been two men moving in and out of it. Now, by reasonable doubt, it's fair to guess that this is a potential Hamas rocket launching site that's being set up just meters away uh, from our hotel and again as I point out bang in the middle of what is a, a residential area full of hotels and apartment buildings. So that's the rocket being fired today morning a day after it was assembled at the exact spot the rocket has been fired. All right, folks, uh, what I'm showing you there is Indian television. And that was Indian TV showing Hamas terrorists launching and building Hamas rocket launchers and launching the rockets right outside the hotel in a residential area that has lots of hotels, as the reporter indicated. Today, Benjamin Netanyahu said that there is evidence that uh, rockets were launched and tunnels were dug, touching mosques and schools, that rockets were launched or mortar shells were launched from uh, proximity to the Gaza Elementary School. And you also have, in addition to this Indian uh, TV video, French TV, uh, Italian TV, same things. And the New York Times photographer who was there in Gaza saying that the Gaza militants, as he put them, are never seen in public. They hide in homes and in, 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 uh, in public areas, inside buildings, and do their dirty work from there. So uh, the truth is coming out. The truth is coming out. But will the world care? That's the big question. All right, folks, um, I want you to watch this video as well. Then we'll be joined by our first guest, Shmuel Sackett. Watch. Israel have to win this war, and not only for Israel. Israel have to win this war against the extreme Islamic terror, not for, only for ourselves, but, but for the entire world. And in order to do so, in, in the most humane way, I, uh, I said that we should give the Arabs in these territories where, where they're launching the, the rockets and digging the tunnels and fighting, using, fighting against us, using their own children as a human shield, we should give the, these Our, civilians eight uh, hours Mr. to move to a sheltered, sheltered places. That's what I was talking All right, about. Well, all right, Moshe Feiglin, uh, the man that uh, our next guest is supporting to be the next Israeli prime minister against Benjamin Netanyahu. We welcome in uh, Shmuel Sackett, international director and co-founder of Manigut Yehudit, and that means uh, the Jewish leadership movement. And uh, Shmuel, welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, the, the, before we get to, to, uh, to um, uh, Ms. Feiglin, uh, uh, the breaking news today is that Benjamin Netanyahu a short while ago took to the microphones in Jerusalem and talked about having proof, showing videos of mortars being fired by Hamas during the conflict. Uh, from elementary, outside of elementary schools, the Gaza Elementary School, uh, having a proof of tunnels and mortar sites near or touching mosques and schools. Um, this, this shouldn't surprise. We also have journalists today from Italy and India and other places saying that they couldn't say it while they were there. They were afraid of Hamas, but Hamas rockets killed children, and one of them even provided a video. Um, th this shouldn't be shocking, but of course the media gets caught up in this for one reason or another and reports it as something else. I'm not surprised by any of this. Hamas actually stands for Hides Among Mosques and Schools, Hamas. They are a bunch of thugs. They are not prepared to fight us man to man. They are a bunch of hooligans who are trying to wreak havoc on the Jewish world and on the Western world as well. We saw what their partners did right here in this country on 9-11. This is the same group they are fighting a religious war. They are not interested in engaging in so-called the regular rules of war. 
and they use their own civilians as human shields. This is not surprising. I don't need to prove it to the world. The world knows it already. We need to hit them hard until they surrender, until they are defeated once and for all. Are you satisfied uh, with uh, the military operation Absolute. now being over? No, I am not satisfied at all. Because every single person knows that in one maximum two years, we're gonna be at it again. Only this time, the missiles they send into Israel may have chemical warheads, and therefore the Iron Dome becomes a liability which blows it out of the sky. I happen to serve, for 20 years I've served in a anti-chemical warfare unit in the Army, and we are expected to see serious action in the coming years because we didn't finish the job. You start a war, you finish it. And uh, Netanyahu showed that he is actually quite weak. He did not do what was required. Moshe Fagan, today's deputy speaker of the Knesset, a member of Israel's Security and Defense Committee, is calling for a, a victory, complete victory against the enemy and all those who support them. And he sat in the chair you're sitting in not too long ago. It was yes, very nice did. talking to him and meeting him. Uh, I, I wanted, since you bring him up right now, I want, let me get to some of the criticism. And I hate to even bring this up because uh, he's being accused by Hamas, <laughs> uh, with, with a guy in a shirt and tie, on with Wolf Blitzer, who, who repeated the Jewish, uh, the blood libel against Jews right. with the matzah and the Christian blood. Uh, and makes the statement and, and pretends to be reading that, uh, that um, uh, Mr. Fagelin was calling for uh, putting Palestinians in a concentration camp, absolutely which of course nonsense. is not is absolutely untrue. But you know, when you're attacked by Hamas, it means it's you're doing something thing. right. Badge of honor, yeah. Look, they're trying everything. They're trying a cyber war. They're trying a media war. They're trying a, a physical war, a terror war. We know that just the other day in Jerusalem, a 29-year-old father of five was killed when they flipped over a bus, bulldozing they're using every tactic imaginable and we're sitting like little lambs trying to uh, do something that the world agrees to. We have to fight like King David, like a lion. This is how the Jewish state was founded. Great heroes and warriors who in six days defeated five Arab countries and they had tanks and they had planes. Today we can't beat a bunch of goons. It's because we're not fighting the proper way and we are going to change that. Are you satisfied that uh, the tunnels have been destroyed as, I, as uh, the pr Prime Minister claims? I don't believe they've all been de destroyed. Plus, could you imagine what tunnels they would, they probably exist in Hebron and in Ramallah and in Jenin? And if we create this Palestinian state, God forbid, this is going to be complete tunnel. Uh, the whole country will be full of tunnels and there'll be terror uh, throughout the entire country. We have to learn from this. They're not, Steve, they're not interested in a productive society. Today is nine years exactly to the day where Israel ex over. expelled its own yeah. people from the Gush Katif. Now in that area in, in, in uh, Gaza, do you know how many people have moved into that area? How many Arabs have moved into that area in the last nine years? Zero. How many, how many buildings have been built? How many businesses have begun in that area? Zero. It used to be the vegetable and flower capital of Israel, exporting to all over Europe in the millions of dollars. How many has been done in the last nine years? Zero. They're not into doing anything positive, not for themselves, not for their people. They are a bloodthirsty people who want to soak that country in blood and then come to these shores and come after you as well. All right, so uh, uh, under Moshe uh, Feiglin uh, as Prime Minister of Israel, if he were the Prime Minister throughout this conflict or while the rockets were being lobbed by Hamas in the aftermath of the kidnappings and murders of the three Israeli uh, teenagers, who by the way, I believe there's uh, some, been some arrest in that, but right. how things be different right now? Moshe Feiglin is not just a sheriff or a, or a uh, defense minister. Moshe Feiglin wants to turn the entire country into a strong, proud Jewish state, whether that means in the educational side, on the economic side, and also the military side, by declaring that the entire state of Israel belongs to the Jewish people as mandated by God himself. The Promised Land, Gaza, Ramallah, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, this belongs to the Jewish nation for thousands of years. We need to exert our sovereignty there. We need to establish our state in the entire so you, borders. You, you, you want to take back, take over Gaza again? That's correct. Okay. And But not as colonialist like we did for many years. We want to establish true, true sovereignty there. Moshe Feigl is calling for turning Gaza into Jaffa. Jaffa is a city where they actually the Arabs are doing well. They're doing well economically. They're building. He and he mentioned it on this Wolf Blitzer interview. 
He is actually the only humane approach for them. He's looking to help them. He's looking to assist them. And if they would listen to him and if the world will just cut back some slack for a minute, you will see a better life for Jews and Arabs in a strong, proud state of Israel. So I know, uh, uh, far from concentration camps, does he uh, favor um, relocating the Palestinians? 82% of Arabs living in Gaza, this is their poll uh, by Anna Jach University in Shechem, 82% of Arabs living in Gaza want to relocate themselves. We simply want to help them. We want to help them realize their lifelong mission. What better thing is there than that? We want to give them money for their homes. The average salary today in Gaza is $103 a month. You can't exist like that. Hamas is not helping them. Fatah is not helping them. We're prepared to help them, send them to fulfill their but lifelong dream. none of the dream. Arab countries take the Palestinians. They kick them out. So <laughs> they should same. be on Wolf Blitz's show. Right. Complaining. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's, it's historic, right? I mean, how, come, how come the Jews took in all their fellow refugees from Europe and from Morocco and from Yemen and from Syria? You raise a good point, Steve. Why won't the Arabs take in their own cousins? How come? That's a wonderful They've question. They've out of almost every one of the countries. Thank you very much, because they know that you can't live in peace with these people. So I am expected to live in peace with them? Thank you. No. All right. So uh, the standing of Benjamin Netanyahu right now, uh, has it ever been higher? Uh, I mean, in general, if there was a poll done, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the, the general population. We have a minute left. I mean, can he be defeated in your view? I, I know it's a different system than we have here, but, go, yes. but can he I, be defeated? I believe he's going to be under a tremendous amount of pressure in the weeks ahead. The right wing of Israel is going to say, hey, you didn't finish the job. Why did we lose 64 soldiers for nothing? The left wing is going to say, now because of you, Netanyahu, our professors can speak in uh, Oxford or lecture here, or orchestra can perform. You mean perform world reaction? World uh, reaction to what happened? The United Nations is going to start ridiculous war crimes. I believe that Prime Minister Netanyahu will, will resign. He is already the longest sitting Prime Minister in Israel's history. So we're going to arrange a nice retirement package for him, and we're going to try to look for alternative leadership led by Moshe Feiglin. Shmuel Sackett, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure, thank Steve. Thank you very much. All right, folks, very interesting, and uh, we're going to talk more about this as the show goes on, obviously. And we'll be back with the Molesburg panel. We'll uh, discuss this and a lot of other issues domestically speaking that we're going to address with the panel. So don't go away on the Steve Molesburg Show, Newsmax Television.